Hello and welcome back to the Linux Panic YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own Ubuntu or Debian ISO. But first, don't forget to hit, like, to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. So you're probably wondering, why would I want my own Ubuntu or Debian ISO? Well, there are many reasons, but one of them could be you want your own control over the ISO you install or you choose. You just want a spare ISO just sat away somewhere already set up somewhat or all the way to your liking. So this is why you would want your own ISO. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So first off, we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need to add the universe uh, repository. We're going to need to add the PPA for Cubic Wizard and install Cubic. So first off, we need to do a sudo app update. Make sure we get all the updates down because it is imperative to update beforehand and during if it requires and afterwards, as always. So we're just going to go through here. I, I was spending some time looking at uh, looking at custom ISOs, and this is what I found is the best way to do it for, uh, for Ubuntu that doesn't require sitting and waiting a million years. So once we've checked our updates, we've found out we don't have any. We need to add the universe repository. So we need to do sudo apt add repository. Have like a spell repository. Repository universe. And when it says, hey, look, press enter to continue your control C to cancel, you need to hit enter. It's going to have a quick chat with the uh, canon canonical backend. And as we can see here, there was no errors checked. It's just like, I'm done which is good. We now need to add the PPA for this. So we need to do sudo apt add repository PPA colon cubic hyphen wizard and then release. I will add this into the description so you don't uh, miss out and you have something to reference. And as you can see here, it pops up a custom thing and the reason we can see why it's called cubic because custom Ubuntu ISO creator that's actually pretty smart so all we need to do here is hit enter that's going to go through the process of getting everything set up the PPA all sorted out so we can download from it which should take seconds as we saw here as we can see here it's just completed so now we need to update again just to make sure everything's up, make everything sh uh, make sure everything's fine. As usual, once I've made finished this video, this virtual machine is going to be killed off. It's just so uh, that's why the parts are so short anyway. So next, we need to do sudo apt install hyphen hyphen no hyphen install hyphen recommends cubic. Ah, it would help if I put in the hyphen correctly and what this is, all we need to do is just hit yes to download so whilst this is doing we need to get our Ubuntu variation or Debian variation of choice so in this case so I need to have a drink of water so in this case we are going with Ubuntu desktop we're going with Jammy Jellyfish which is the latest that's perfectly fine. So as we can see here, Cubic is installed. So let's just hit the Windows key or Windows alternative, depending on what you're using. My keyboard has Windows key. Type in Cubic and open. And here it is. It's as simple as this. So we need to choose a directory for what it, where it's going to work out of. So we're going to make one. Documents, we're going to go Linux, Linux Panic OS, hit create. Hit select, that'll be using that as the project file. It's got a load of information here. Hit next. Now, what we're going to do is select the ISO. So in this case, it would be here. And it will populate all the stuff it, it can change, but we can actually change some stuff here. So in this case, I could change this to my GitHub. So we will do a GitHub 
https colon colon git hub dot com slash m at one slash m at one and we will just call this oh i don't know version linux lpos and there we go all we need, for what we need to do next is just hit ok or continue and what it's going to do is just going to make sure everything's sorted out here and what this is going to do is going to actually extract the files and and stick it in a true root environment so you can actually do some changes make sure the operating system's updated make sure everything is okay so this would be the point where you add some add things that you are able to add in a true root environment now what i'm going to do is just going to take it through the basic update process make sure everything's fine and i, and I can show you what more is available to do once you've gotten past the true root environment now this may take a little bit of time because it is just decompressing uh, the entire file system and making it available to be to be used and to be changed now this is negligible in comparison to the actual putting it back together again recompressing it sorting out the installer and such of things do look a bit different once they look a small bit different when you go to install it it doesn't just jump straight into the installer it does the typical hey look i am grub here's a list of options what do you want to do it does that it's that's no bother it's it works i as i can confirm if we go here we actually have a working version uh this isn't updated as we can see this is a completely different version to what is here but i have already done this and confirmed it has worked because i like to make sure that what i am telling you and what i'm making a video into actually works because i spent some time trying to confirm that the other method was working and it, it didn't work which is a shame because if it had a word it would have been very good but in this case this works perfectly fine i've had no issues with it at all other than maybe at the time but considering what it's doing it's just decompressing the file system recompressing the file system adding any any extras removing any extras going through the entire process in a bit of software that was left less than 100 megabytes in size you find me a bit of windows software that's this small that does this I, if you can, I will actually review it and go over it. But in this case, here we are. We've entered the virtual virtual environment. We're in a true root environment, so we want to do apt update because we're in a root environment. Now that's just going to have a quick chat with the canonical servers and go through the process. Now I don't need to say, hey, look, yes, do these things because it's just going to do it automatically. As we can see here, it's just going through the process make sure everything's updated so now we need to upgrade uh, upgrade now sometimes it may not be worth sometimes it's probably not worth doing the um upgrade because it can cause issues with this true root virtual environment as i found as i, as I found out whilst doing some research into this so do that at your own risk but as we'll notice here the updates were flying through much faster than if you were doing it on Ubuntu itself. So this here, this is a good way to make sure your system's updated before you actually install. So again, the one of the one of the key benefits of using this and doing it like this is you have control and it's updated. So if you wanted to make a custom variation. You could do it if you just set up so all everything you want to install is already installed when it comes time it's it's a wonderful idea it works it just takes a little it takes a little bit of extra time it takes a little bit of extra setup but you can then just say hey look i want this this and this done in this particular way ready to be installed at setup it just saves time in the future when it's just you you spend the time now to save the time in the future that's how i see it so what i'm going to do whilst i sit and wait is i'm going to just cut the footage and then we'll come back and uh, we'll be back shortly
as we can see here and we are back it's just currently going through the configuration of or generating some locales now if we scroll up a small part here if we keep scrolling actually uh, we came to here where i said i couldn't get access to some connection diamond that's expected it's just because it's from what i could see here it's just trying to talk to something which you couldn't get access to which is entirely fine because this is just a stripped down version of of the operating system now what it asked here is did i want to keep some package distribution i said yes i'm just going to keep the default and then we moved on to here now the from what from what it looked like it was a, generating a fair chunk of locales so it did take a little while but not too long and as we can see here it's just going through and just finishing off setting up all the updates making sure everything is a-okay and remember to stay hydrated as we can see here it's just setting up the office suite in this case LibreOffice. now when it comes to installing the operating system you can then it'll then make sure all of these things are already installed so if you install it here and now and when it comes to the install process it'll work just fine everything will already be there because you've installed it already that is the benefit one of the benefits of doing it in this way you can install some obscure software that not many people use if you install it in tutor room at the start if you install it here and when it, when it comes time everything will be ready and ready to go as it just it's just going through the various processes just chucking some errors that are expected because of the environment it's in as we can see we are done here so if i do sudo or i do apt update because i don't need to do sudo apt update because we are in a root environment it's just going to check everything that's done here we are all packages updated but if i scroll right the way back up to the top initially uh, we were somewhere in the region of three well, we're at 376 and now we are done with no le none left so what we're going to do is we're going to hit next it'll say hey look you've exited the virtual environment what it's going to do is it's going to confirm everything here just go through various processes processes of making sure that the operating system is ready to be repackaged up and here is the important thing you need to pay attention here all packages listed are available in live environment check marked packages will be removed during the installation so when making the iso anything that has a check it's just going to remove it so for example it's going to remove deja dop or decontrol tools or what have you so there, there are the options to remove uh, a good chunk of stuff, such as a good chunk of fonts, for example. You could remove them. It's removing game mode, GCC, Gedit. A, a load of stuff can be removed to just strip down the operating system even further. So as we can see here, apparently GPI is going to be removed. However, this is just the version that may be needed for the live environment. There's a lot of stuff here that you can make sure that is removed or is not removed. So you could go for a really, really stripped down version. Which is perfectly fine. Such as the X server that wasn't used here, so it's not going to be removed. Uh, we've got some UPower USB, you know, Ubuntu stuff. But it's all fine. So what we're going to do now is just click next. As we can see here, there are two versions. We are going to go with the most updated version, as this is the uh, higher version of the kernel, as compared to this version. So we're going to use this version. Preceding and booting can be left alone. I'd, I'd advise you check the manual to use that. And as we can see here, it's giving us some options for compression or and size. But in this case, I'm just going to use gzip as it's the base as it's the recommended version and I found it caused me no issues the first time around and we're just going to hit finish and so what this is going to do 
it's just going to go through and copy the selected boot kernels files to the disk, which it has done over here. It's going to compress it all back down into a format it can use. Sorry, pardon me. And then it's just going to go through this process. So while we sit and wait for this to complete, now this could take anywhere from five to 20 minutes, depending on system and how large the ISO will end up be, uh, finally being. So what we're going to do is just going to sit and wait and enjoy some Skylar Fire by Otis McDonald. Now, as we can see, this is now finished. It goes through the process of saying, here's the checksum, here's the checksum file in case you want to run it to confirm everything is okay. And we can see this is the size. This is the name of the file and the version information. And we can test it, which will open up a KVM version or a QEMU, I can't remember which one it is, but it opens up another virtual machine, but I'm not going to open up a virtual machine inside a virtual machine because the virtual machine this uses to test will cannot access the host sources correctly. So as we can see here, we're now done. So all we have to do is just open up our files, go to where we stored, in this case documents, go here and here we are. Ubuntu 22.04.0 hyphen LPOS. That's my version. And everything's correct. Now this is exactly identical to this virtual machine. Everything is the exact same. As we can see here, there's some updates. I, I didn't update everything, but this is because these are the updates after the install. So this is this is a bit different. These are the updates after after the fact. But everything here you see here, I made with my custom ISO. Now I will just go grab my ISOs and prove this to you. So all I need to do here is just go here and pull this over to here. And we can see here a bunch of 22.04.0 LPOS. Uh, 20, uh, the 8th of the 6th of August 2022. And as we can see, it is the exact same in size. 
to this. Of course, there's some difference because between Mibi bytes and uh, Gibby bytes, uh, gigabytes. This is using Gibby bytes instead of gigabytes. Gibby, not giga. It's hell of a lot, hell of an awkward argument. Anyway, it has been how to make your own custom Debian or Ubuntu uh, operation operating system variation. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, you, I have been Nick. You've been amazing, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.